so this is what you do in the bar. This is a bit much. Don't mind me. I only want to wash my hands. Chris, please. Come on, David. It's a bit late in the day for us to start getting coy with each other. It's not a matter of being coy. This is my house. You should respect my privacy. Like you did mine when you turned up on my doorstep wanting comfort. At your invitation. Well, let's just remember what that was about. I helped you with your problem. And then, like most men, when you got what you wanted, you were gone. As if nothing had happened. Can't we put all that in the past, please? You hurt me, David. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, but, but, but um, this situation with you in the house here with Jean, it, 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 now you're walking in like this. Really, I, I found it very awkward. And I suppose you'd like me to leave. Well, I do think it would be best all round, yes. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm here at your wife's invitation. And until she asks me to go, here I'll stay. <sighs> I don't understand why you have to go so quick. How would I feel if I stayed here, seeing your dad with Bev and Josh, knowing you'd given up on your own son? Mum, I can't go back on that. I know I'm right. But I can move back in here if that'd help. Help what? Help keep you here. There's nothing here for me, Michael. Nothing but painful memories. I've got to make a life elsewhere. Dad, will you tell us she doesn't have to go like this? Dee, you sure you're thinking straight? When you think of the state you were in last week? I want to move on with my life. I can't ever stay here. But will you be all right on your own? I'll meet people, make new friends, get involved with the church. That's not the same as family. Michael, I'm at the end of a telephone, not emigrating. I'm only going to our Carmel's in Bolton. Now, take that suitcase down. Be a good lad. When's the train? Oh, I'm not leaving until tonight. I've got a few things to sort out. You will keep the florist going, won't you, if Jean's prepared to run it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, I hate all this. Things end and breaking up. I'm still there for you. And our Jackie, too. Is our Jackie coming round? No, she's working. I saw her last night. I don't know what the fuss is about. What's going to happen to this place? Well, I suppose we'll sell it. I haven't really thought about it. It'd be easy if you sorted that out. Yeah, sure. Uh, haven't got my head round it yet. Right, then. Go and sort the washing out. Will she be all right? Yeah, of course she will. Of course she will, son. What's up? Water collected on the patio. Oh. I'm going to check, see if the gutterin's all right. <sighs> Wouldn't there be a mark on the wall if there'd been water splashing down? Not necessarily. Anyway, I'll check. <laughs> Not draining away, that's all. But I don't think it rained last night, so where's the water coming from? Drains. I mean, if one was blocked. Oh, that's all I need after a day at work. Well, it's only a tiny puddle, not to worry. Look, Eddie, if our mo rings, tell her I'll call her when I can. Oh, when? Um, she phoned when you were at work. Oh, now he tells me. Thanks. Sounds a bit funny. Not up to something now, you the pennies. <sighs> Don't be soft. Like what? Not planning another wild night out like you had on Friday. Oh, yeah, very wild. Popcorn in the pictures. Well, she sounded excited about something. Very secretive. Yeah, well, know what she's like. Ah, uh, right, I'm away. We off. What? God, what's wrong with you today? You're away with the fairies. I thought you'd already been shopping this morning. Well, some of us are busy, that's all. See you later. Pardon me for breathing. Oh, and uh, get us some ginger biscuits, will you, love? You haven't bought some for ages. Right. Here you are. Knew I had some ketchup. I'll unpack it for you now. Thanks. So, how was everybody of you here for them? Yeah, they think I was great. You should have went with them, you know. Like, it's not my scene. Anyway, it's nice to have the house to myself for once. Oh, I have a catch away, eh? No, it's just nice, that's all. I know I've got university, haven't I? Oh, yeah, of course. There you go, Dad. Oh, thank you, son. Hey, you should have our Michael round, you know. He's a dab hand with the old curry, aren't you? Dad. All right, I'm only suggesting, that's all. Did you have a good night to the night? Yeah, did you? Yeah, I had a great time. How'd it go with your mate, Viv, innit? Well, it's hell days yet. Is it serious, though? Who knows? What about you and Sarah? Is that serious? Well, it's the same as you. I hardly know yet. I'm sorry about what happened between us, you know. 
Here you go, love. Thanks. 55p, isn't it? Is correct. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Hey, call me Ron. You make me sound dead old. You are, Ted. Thank you, Michael. Right, well, I better go. Yeah, me too. Well, uh, I'll see you around, eh? I hope everything works out for you. See you. Someone else already, eh? Look, Dad, there was nothing going on between me and Beth, all right? OK, OK, I'll keep me nose out. So, uh, who are you seeing now, then? <sighs> Sarah Banks, if you must know. What, the young girl in the Banks? She's married, isn't she? What's your mate Carl gonna say about that? They're separated, Dad. And I only took her out for a drink, that's all. We're not getting married or anything. But she's got a child, hasn't she? And you know what your mother would say? You wouldn't lumber yourself with Josh, but you'll get involved. I'm not getting involved. And I don't want my mum dragged in on all this. She'll only start to worry and there's no need. And not today, of all days. All right, fair enough. But you just be careful, eh, son? <laughs> hiya. Oh, hiya. Well, I never thought I'd see you in here again, the way you shot off the other night. Oh, no, I, you know, I was enjoying myself. I just had to get home, so... Nice. Lager and lime, wasn't it? Uh, no, it, I haven't come for a drink. Um, I lost a ring in here last Friday. I wondered if anyone had found it. Not that I know of, sorry. Oh. Maybe you lost it going home. No, I know I lost it in here. I took it off, you see. Why? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> it was my wedding ring. And, well, as it was a singles night. Oh, uh, well, not me. I mean, I wasn't here to... Well, you know. I was here with my sister, that's all. You know, just to keep her company for a laugh, like... She thought a wedding ring would put people off. Um, off here. <sighs> Sounds stupid now, but I seem to make sense at the time. Well, that explains it, then. What? You knocking me back like that when I stupidly tried to chat you up. I had no idea you were married. I never would have if I'd known. It's all right. Nice to know it can still happen. I don't want you to think, well... I don't just chat anyone up, but it was a singles night. Seemed to be doing all right with our mo. Easy to talk to, isn't she? Oh, she's dead friendly. She's really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, about the ring. I'll ask the cleaners. Fingers crossed, eh? Well, the sooner the better, if you can. I'm trying like hell to keep it from my husband. Come back if he knew. You, you come to a singles night? Just for a laugh? Well, no, not exactly. If he knew I'd lost the ring, it means a lot to him. But it's bothers, you see. Hey, we'll find it. I'll ask around. I'll start this afternoon. Top priority. How's that? What's this? I thought you'd be halfway through the Battle of the Atlantic by now. There is nothing wrong with a man wanting to enjoy the rejuvenating pleasures derived from bathing in peace. Most people call it a bath. And most people expect to be allowed a degree of privacy in their own homes. Oh, you've not been upsetting Audrey again, have you? No, I have not. She has just walked in on me in the bath as if she owned the place. That must have been nice for her. Jean, look, don't you think it's about time she packed her bags? Well, because she's seen your little rubber duck. That's overreacting a bit, isn't it? Look, Jean. When we retired back here, I, I thought it would be just you and I, together, alone. What brought this on? You sound like Trevor Howard. Besides, you're never in and Audrey's good company, so she stays until her own house is fit to live in again. And in the meantime, I suggest you get a lock for the bathroom door. I thought I'd find you up to your elbows in pasta by now. Yeah, I know I said I'd cook us something, but when you're in lectures all day, a takeaway is easier. Do you mind? Prefer it. If your coffee's anything to go by. Thank you. <laughs> I brought us a vid. I thought we could slob out in front of the box as we got the place to ourselves. Snap, I've already got one. It's on the side. Oh, great minds, eh? My life is a dog. Yeah, it's Swedish. It's really sad, but it's good. Subtitles. Oh, what's the matter? Can't you read? Oh, funny. You've got to be in the mood for them, though, haven't you? Well, what have you brought? The Getaway. Just out. Oh, great. Is that like Kim Basinger and Alec Baldwin? Been making out all night. Oh, I don't know. Alec could have me if he really wanted. 
Then again, so could Kim. Oh, you're such a tart. Jealous? What's up? Isn't my movie right on enough for you? Just because it isn't foreign. I'm not a film snob. I've got a very wide taste, actually. Mm, I could have watched both, though, couldn't we? Mine first, and then we can sleep through yours. Cheeky. <laughs> I bet that's Mum. Hello. Hi, Mum. Yeah, I thought it'd be you. <clears throat> so how are you? Good. No, I'm fine. No problems. House hasn't burned down or anything. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'll get it. Just hang on a minute, Mum. Get down. You're not meant to be here. Go down. Sorry about that. No, I haven't really done much. I've been too busy with college work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So what have you been doing? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. No, I'm fine. Oh, no, I'm not alone. I like being on my own sometimes. OK. Right, well, I'd better go. Give me a little to Rachel, so I hide to Sinbad, won't you? All right, then. OK, see ya. Bye. God, what are you like? I could tell this speech was she's going to be wondering what I was doing. Not complaining, are you? No, but I don't think she'd be too happy if she knew you were here with me. Is that go for the neighbours as well? Ashamed I might frighten them off with my taste in movies. Well, you know what they're like. They're always jumping to conclusions. Fair enough. But what about your mum? I thought she knew you were gay. Yeah, she does. But I don't think she'd be too thrilled if she knew you were here. Do your mum and dad know about you? Oh, God, didn't you hear about World War Three? Mum went into drama queen overdrive, but Dad was much more understanding. He threw me out. Really? I haven't spoken since. Anyway, can we change the subject? Of course we can. Right, how's about you put the plates in the oven um, and make the coffee and I'll go and get the takeaway? Aye, aye, Captain. And don't worry, I won't answer the door or the phone. Your scandalous secret's safe with me. <laughs> You don't mind me being here, do you? Well, of course I don't. I wouldn't have invited you otherwise, would I? Sorry, just my insecurity showing through. No, it's cool. Let's just see how it goes, all right? Now, what do you want from the takeaway? How about a snog? Hello? Oh, hiya. I was having to catch Max and Patricia before I went. Say a proper goodbye. Yeah. Look, I've been thinking, why don't I run you up to your caramels? It's only up the M6. Oh, no, you're all right. No, no, I'll do it. I'll call back in about an hour, eh? Remember the day we moved in? All your <laughs> clutter everywhere. Like both of our Tonys. Don't remind me. <laughs> Max and Patricia's faces. <laughs> yeah. It's been a good house, hasn't it, eh? Till I managed to cock everything up. When you mess up, you mess up in style. I'll give you that, Ron Dixon. Actually, the, um... I've been thinking about the house, you know, and... Well, I don't think it's a good idea to leave it empty, you know, with all the burglaries and that. Well, maybe Michael would like to move in till it's sold. Yeah, there is that, I suppose, but... Well, it just seems a bit daft that this place is going begging and... me and Bev and Josh are stuck in a one-bedroom flat. Oh, you take the biscuit, you really do. Are you suggesting...? No, I just thought that if I kept up the mortgage payments but paid you a decent maintenance, then we could come to some arrangement. I know what kind of arrangement you want. Move her in the back while I go out the front. Is that what you're saying? No, it wouldn't have to be that quick, like. This is our home. I mean, we lived here. We were happy for a while. This was Tony's home. How can you think of such a thing? Well, somebody's got to live here, dear, haven't they? Yeah, but not you and Bev. Well, all right, forget about Bev. Look at it from my point of view. If you go and this place gets sold, I'm left with nothing. How do you think it is for me? Well, you seem confident, sure about what you're going to do. I've got a plan for the future and all, you know. It's the thought of her living here. Well, think of our Michael and Jacqueline, then. I mean, if I live here, at least they've still got a home, haven't they? They've got somewhere they can go to. But if the house gets sold, they've got the cash. But it's not the same, Dee, and you know it's not. I'm talking about... Well, I don't know, I'm talking about continuity. It's about the way things carry on. So long as you can carry on as normal. We can't risk obsessing your life, can we? What are you going to do when you get bored with Bev? Trade her in for a new model as well. 
Maybe you could stock a garage full of floozies, save you going out looking. And then when you fancy a change, you can shout, next, please. Just, just so long as you're happy, who cares how many lives you destroy? God, you don't know how much I hate you, do you, Ron? David, I was hoping I might find you here. Hello, Max. Audrey. I was um I was hoping I might tempt you to uh, to an oat grey and a custard slice. Uh, I've got the kettle on. Oh, is Jean home then? Uh, no, she won't be back from the florist for another hour yet. It'll uh, it'll just be you and me. Well, actually, uh, don't be long. Uh... You don't want it to go cold, do you? Well, have you got yourself a fan there? Nonsense. Why is it you want Audrey out of the house so quickly? I don't. Well, I... I, uh, I do. It, it's just that she's a bit overbearing at times. What? I thought you'd have enjoyed it, having two women waiting on you, hand and foot. Sometimes you can have too much of a good thing, Max. Yeah. Hello. What's going on there? Where? Over at number 10. I thought I saw someone skulking round the side of the jaw dashes. They're on holiday, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we should investigate. No, 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 hold on, hold on. What about Audrey and her custard slice? Oh, Max, this is far more important. I'm chairman of the BRA. It's my responsibility as a good neighbour. Well, hang on a minute. I'll come with you. I'll just get my coat. Don't want you doing your Charles Bronson impression. Just turn it down a minute. Why? Just turn it down. I can hear something. I'm imagining things. Listen, there, there is again. I think there's somebody out there. Hello? Is anyone there? <coughs> ah! <coughs> Beth! Cracker heel! Oh, sorry, love. Didn't think there was anyone in. You know, no lights on and that like. Yeah, I bet you didn't. What do you think you're playing at? Hey, no, it's not like that. Honest. I'm just keeping an eye on the place. You know, I promise Sinbad to be busy. Well, just go away, will you, and take that with you? Well, she must have got a scent for something there. Rats. Just stop it, will you? Crack her heel. No, she's got a good nose on her, you know. I reckon she must have found something buried under your patio there, love. It's just a stupid dog, and you ought to keep it under control. Now, can you leave, please? Surprise, surprise. <coughs> if it isn't one man and his dog. Just being public spirited, that's all. Watching out for an old mate, OK? <coughs> and taking advantage of an empty house, no doubt. That's slander, you! David, I don't think that... Can you all just go home? This is private prophecy, not a circus. <coughs> Leave it, Beth. Let's just go in, eh? Ah, I see you have company. So? I told you all the light, didn't I? Especially him. Beth, we're only trying to help. Hey, better just clear it off, eh? No harm uh, done. Let's just leave the girls to it. You go in. Sorry you have to be disturbed. Oh, take that dog away. Cracker, heel! Look at that. Well trained. <laughs> Come on, David, let's go. For future reference, Mr. Corkhill, we are the residents here, not you. If there's any patrolling to be done, I think you can safely leave it to us, to the BRA. Oh, is that right? Well, you haven't got a dog, have you? A sniffer. I think we can manage without. David, can we please go? Come here. I don't know. That's all the thanks you get for trying to be upright, responsible citizens. Great, isn't it, eh, cracks? Yeah, well, this is my mate's house. And if I promise to look after it for him, that's just what I'm going to do. Come on, cracker. Let's go on for our tea, eh, girl? Come on. Right, where were we? Oh, yeah, Alec Baldwin was just about to do something very interesting with Kim Basinger. Oh, babe, do you mind if I just give the video a miss, please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Nothing new those two could teach us, anyway. Are you OK? No, I'm not. I'm sick of living here. I'm sick of people sticking the nose in and wanting to know where I am and what I'm doing and who I'm with all the time. It's like, it's like living in a goldfish bowl. Well, maybe it's time you thought about moving out. Back home, eh? Home for your 
tea? Do you want one of these? Mm. Not in your hair, all right? All right. Are you getting off? That's right. Hello, little fella. Well, if you're here about Josh, I know one will keep in touch and he'll tell you what's going on with him. Well, I hope you will, uh -huh. but it's not why I'm here. I've come to offer my congratulations. Sorry? The conquest is complete, isn't it? Got what you wanted. First my husband, then my house to lot. Happy? I don't know what you're on about, love. Ron's tell me all about your little plan to move into my house. I thought you'd at least have waited until I got on the train. You've got it wrong. It's the first I've heard. Typical. You can't even admit it to me face. Look, Ron didn't even mention it to me, I promise. I mean, why would I lie? I wouldn't want to set foot inside your house. Oh, I see. Well, I hope your communications improve, or I don't see a lot of hope for your future as a couple. Our future's fine, thank you. I wouldn't bank on it. Don't ever think you'll be Ron's wife, because I won't divorce him. Well, we'll deal with that when we come to it. Well, you've got a long wait then, haven't you, love? And you might have to deal with this. Our Michael won't always feel the same. There'll come a day when you want custody of that child. His child. You're not going to believe this. I go round there in the movie, she's not bloody there. Dee, what's going on? I was meant to be giving you a lift. Forget it. I'll take a taxi and then get a train. Don't be doing that. Here, take a taxi all the way. You don't change, do you? Money doesn't buy everything. Don't be absurd. No, you're the one that's absurd. Anyway, I'd hang on to that if I was you. I think you're going to need it. Dee. Bye, Ron. Have a nice life. Has she upset you? What's she been saying? It's not what she said, Ron. It's what you didn't. What's going on? Your records. What else do you take? Take where? Take home when you move in, into your house. Look, just let me explain, will you? Don't patronise me, Ron. I am not a child. All right, but I don't know why you're kicking off. Well, what do you expect me to do, eh? Be sit in her chair, cook for you with her pans, sleep in her bed? All right, maybe I should have spoke to you first. Yeah, maybe you should. But whatever way you dress it up, it all amounts to the same thing. You're just trying to replace her with me. Hey, that cow who had the cheek to come here. Bev, you're just upset, love. I am not living in that house. The Channel 4 video, Brookside The Women, features classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside, together with some brand new material. You can find it in most video shops. Last night, he's got a rash. No, he hasn't. That's just where his jumper's been <laughs> rubbing, isn't it, eh? Mm. Hello, Michael. Hi, right, Dad. Hiya. Hiya. Uh, I've got another job interview today, you know. Oh, nice one. Oh, it's all on his shoulder as well. I'm ringing the doctors to make an appointment. Why the talk? Bev, it's nothing. He'd be ill in himself if there was anything the matter. Yeah, well, I'm not taking any chances. Oh. 
Last week, she was worried while her busy is stuck out more than the other. I had to stop her cellar taping it back. First time mothers ate. Your mother was the same with you, you know. Um, she rang today, just to let us know that she got to her caramels all right. I can't believe she just left like that. Yeah, well, I know it seems strange, son, but it is what your mother wanted. You and our Jackie have moved on now, and it'll be easier for her to start a new life in a new place. I know, it's just, uh, I feel as though we've let her down, you know. I wouldn't want to lose touch. Lose touch, you and our Jackie? There's no chance of that. She'll be on the phone to you in every five minutes. Yeah, I suppose so. Anyway, listen, Dad, I've got to shoot off. Yeah, yeah, hang on, hang on. You haven't said what this job is you're going for. Oh, it's just a tape up, general tea's made. It's only for a small facilities company, like. Oh, facilities company? Yeah. What's one of them? Well, they just do editing, you know, for commercials, corporate fids. Oh, corporate fids? You've got no idea what I'm talking about, have you? It just means that I'll be able to stay in Liverpool, that's all. Yeah, but it also means that half of Liverpool will probably be applying for it. Well, so it's... don't you go building your hopes up too I much. I stand as good a chance as anybody else. But you'd stand a better chance if you're wearing a tie, <gasps> wouldn't you? Michael, I said you should have worn one for your last interview. You can borrow one of mine, you know. Oh, I'm sure that surgery keeps the phone off the hook. I'll give it five minutes and I'll try again. Listen, I've got to go. I'll see you later, OK? Like... Yeah, all right, son. Best of luck with the interview. And don't forget, if you ever want to borrow a tie... Oh, no, I don't think Kibbert's eyes have made a comeback yet. You should see some of the ones he's got. He's got one I can carpet the stairs with. Thank you. <laughs> right, I'd better go. See you later. See yeah. ya. Ta-da, son. <sighs> Bev, it's just a patch of red. It's probably that woolly sleepy suit thing you've got him in. Well, he's got to have something to keep him warm of a night. I mean, the room in that flat's freezing. How old is a cure for that, isn't it? I mean, he could have a nice warm bedroom if we just moved into... Oh, here we go again. Look, I've told you for the last time, I am not moving into yours and Dee Dee's yeah. old house. We want somewhere of our own. OK, fair enough, I'll sell up. And I'll split what's left with Dee Dee, after we've cleared the mortgage off, of course, which should leave us with enough money to afford our very own little terrace rat trap, if we're lucky. Maybe we could just rent somewhere nice. Bevlo, what's the harm in just coming and having a look at it? I've seen it. No, you haven't. I mean, properly. Like you didn't know who it belonged to. Then you could see what a good place it'd be for our little Josh. Just the three of us in our own home. All right, I'll go and look at it. That's all I'm promising. Come and have a look at this, Carl. It's got bigger. Do you reckon it's a broken drain or what? I don't know. Might be an underground spring or something. It's ten times worse than it was. There'll be a flight of ducks on it next. Oh, that puddle's still there. Yeah, only now it's a pond. All right, I'll take a proper look at it when I get home from work. Oh, it'll be dark by then, and you'll be saying you can't see to do anything. I know you too well. Is that why you're making out you're not married to me these days, is it? No. Hey? Oh, my yeah, wedding ring. It's all right, I've just took it off to do the washing up. I've never seen you take it off to wash up before. Yeah, well, that's because you're never to be found when I do the dishes. Aye, aye. Me dad thinks you're trying to cop off at your darts matches. Yeah, well, won't be any darts matches now, will there? Well, not home games, anyway. I've had to cancel them. Since when? Since the local told us they were shutting down for a facelift. Oh. Anyway, what about this mess? I'll look at it tonight. You all right for babysitting Becca tomorrow night? Why? Where are you going? Just out. Again? I can't help it if I'm irresistible to this new fella of mine, can I? Oh, yeah. So is he, then? It's for me to know and you to find out, isn't it? There's no skin off my nose. As long as you explain to whoever he is that you've got a kid to think of. Well, Mally, you're at it. Try reminding yourself. Hey, now don't you go accusing me of neglecting Becca. So don't go doing it, then, all right? And anyway, I can't babysit tomorrow night because I'm going out myself. It's all right. I'll ask your mum and dad, then. Come on, Becca, love. Okay. What happened? That missed her by inches, that's all. It must be the water seeping down. Soften the ground. Oh, now will you do something about it? Or are you going to wait till the old house falls in round our ears? Oh, Max. I was hoping I'd catch you. No, no, uh, Thomas. Just wanted to check that you'd remembered about helping me fix Aldrich's boiler. No, it'll... We'll have to leave it till later, because I'm due at the restaurant after I've dropped off Thomas, and then after lunch I've got a meeting with Barry. Well, just as long as we fix it today so that she can go back home tomorrow. You know, I'm not sure that this job should be left to a proper heating engineer. It could take a couple of novices like us hours. I don't care if it takes till midnight, just so long as she can go back home. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll nip round to Audrey's later. Thomas! But I have to be after my meeting with Barry. 
Good man. You don't know how grateful I am. Believe me. Right. Come on, Thomas. There's a good boy. Daddy's waiting for you. Oh, no. Look at your shoes. Oh, good grief. Look at all this mess. God, it's been trailed all over the carpet. Sorry, Dad. It's all right, son. It's not your fault. Listen, you're going to have to go home, leave your shoes at the front door, then Daddy will clean them for you, all right? OK. OK. Good boy. It'll be that wretched cork you'll mutt again. <laughs> it's rather difficult to prove, isn't it? Unless uh, you do proper tests. Look, it's evidence enough. We never had this problem before he acquired that blasted hound of his. And as a parent, Max, I thought you'd be more concerned that children playing around this mess can pick up all sorts of diseases. Well, yes, I am. And I don't suppose anybody would disagree with you that it is a nuisance, but I still don't see what you think you can do about it. Ah, well, I intend to reinforce the principle that an Englishman's close is his castle, and not some lavatory for loose bald mongrels with irresponsible owners. Well, I'll see you, Gary. Thanks a lot. Hi, mate. Hi, Ray. You're keen, aren't you? Arriving early for the evening shift. Uh, well, actually, I've come to tell you I won't be turning up at all. I... Oh, come on, Mike. What's the school? I'm sorry it's short notice, Mick. It's just, you know that job I applied for? They rang me today to ask if I could go in for an interview later on. All right. I can't say I blame you chasing full-time work like it's dead hard coping in here on my own at tea time, innit? Yeah, I know. Well, Sarah'll be able to cover for me, like... Sarah Banks? No, no. Not after all the hassle I had the last time she worked here. Well, she was going through a rough patch then, wasn't she? Tell me about it. Most of her marriage breakup happened there in front of me and the customs. Mick, things are more settled now. And I know she could use the cash. Oh, come on, Mick, just this once, please. Ah, come on, man. I do know what it's like being a single parent. I'll give her a bell. Hey, good luck with the interview. Nice one, and uh, sorry about having let you down, mate. That's all right. At least to be worries, eh? So, uh, how's things? I haven't liked to ask since Marianne left and that. <sighs> That's not too bad when the kids are up and about and need looking after, but once they've gone to bed, it's just me and me Jack Todd staring at the box night after night. Mick the monk, that's me. Uh, well, you never know who you might meet, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the world is full of women looking for a 36-year-old pizza man with a couple of kids and an overdraft. I'll probably end up having to fight them. <laughs> well, let me know if there's any young spare, all right? Yeah, you're on. Ah, conspiracy time, is it? Something going on between you two? Eh, uh, no, well, we've only been offered a drink in that. Uh, so far, eh? Well, to be honest with you, Mick, I don't know how far it'll get. I've never been out with a girl with a kid before. <sighs> yeah, well, it makes a big difference, mate. It means you just can't do what you want, when you want. What does he think about it? It's like that, is it? Well, it's, uh, it's just a bit awkward, mate. You know, I don't know how you'd feel about me going out with his ex. <sighs> well, take my advice, Mike. Come clean about it. Because the longer you leave it, the harder it gets. Later. Get yourself a reputation as a boozer, you know. Banging on closed pub doors. Oh, sorry. I know it's probably useless coming back again, but oh, Eddie keeps asking me about my wedding ring. Wedding ring? Mm. Not this one, by any chance. Oh, God. Oh, oh, you've saved me life. Oh, not to mention me marriage. Oh, I can't tell you how grateful I am. I just wish there was something I could do. Mm. You could stop and have a coffee with me. Yeah, all right, thanks. So, where'd you find it? In the Hoover bag. Oh, I can't tell you what a relief it is. It'll stop the fellas trying to chat me up like you did at the singles night for a start. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've never seen anyone disappear so quick. <laughs> you weren't that bad. Nah, I've never been much cop at meeting the ladies. Why do you think I have to start a singles night in my own pub? <laughs> I mean, you must have managed somewhere along the line. Were you never married, or...? Yeah. I was married, but... You mustn't let one bad relationship put you off, you know. I mean, I know divorce can really wreck people's confidence, like, but... No, you don't understand. She died. It's nearly five years now. Oh, God. She must have been no age. Oh, I'm sorry, I... I wouldn't have asked her. Yeah, well, you went to know, were you? So... What about that coffee you promised me then? Now that this is back where it belongs. So come on, Ben, what do you think? Well, I haven't really had time to think, have I? I mean, you've been rattling on 90 to the dozen ever since we walked up the front path. Look, you don't want him growing up in any old ropey neighbourhood, do you? It's a desirable executive area, this, isn't it? Especially with the likes of the Farnans and the Crosbys and that. Yeah, well, maybe because it is respectable, people won't want you living here with your fancy woman. 
Well, those will always seem as a bit of stuff as long as we're not married. Yes, but you know that I'd like to marry her, don't you? It's needed being a Catholic, that's the problem. I think you'll ever persuade her to give you a divorce. Yeah. Well, if I'm honest, probably not. But look, divorce or no divorce, we are a real family. And I know that we could be happy living here, Bev. I know we could. It's like she's still here. This can go. Now, come on, Bev. What do you say? I don't know. But you can see it's a good house, can't you? Yeah, but it's yours and Dee Dee's house, isn't it? And a change of wallpaper isn't going to make any difference. You've got a million memories here that I haven't. Bev, would you just listen to me? <sighs> no, Ron. This is where you and Dee Dee lived, and I'm sorry, but I just can't handle it. Where are you going now? Back to the flat, where I belong. I'll never belong here. So long time no see, Max. You forgot to mention that Patricia would be coming along. Well, I suppose he thought you'd just assume I'd be here. I do have a vested interest in the success of the place. And I thought it was important for us both to be here to, well, clear the air once and for all. I mean, let's be honest, relations have been a little strained. Since you tried to get rid of me with the buyout. Well, you have to admit, I did have my reasons. Look, there's not really any point in rehashing all of this. I mean, the upshot is you two are still partners. Right then, fair enough. So who's going to get the meeting going then, partner? Well, Patricia and I have had one or two thoughts we'd like to discuss. Listen, before we go any further, I know Patricia's only probably here to make sure we kiss and make up. But uh, I think when it comes down to the actual running of the restaurant, that should be down to just you and me. Well, as one half of this partnership, I do value Patricia's input. I know that I'm not technically a partner, but you can't argue that I'm not every bit as committed. Shall I start serving the food now, then? Yeah, yeah, fine. You ready to eat now, Barry? Yeah, thanks. Right, well, um, what's first on our agenda, then? Right, well, I thought... Do um... you want to start, Patricia, or shall I? No, no you go. I think it's safe to say there's nobody in, Dad. Just wanted to know if they'd noticed anything on their side. Brian thinks the problem might be over there. All looks sound enough, though, doesn't it? I can't make it out. Looks like Brian can't either. Do you think it'd help if I found him a foot stick? We've got no problem finding water, have we? It's where it's coming from that's the problem. Brian doesn't think it's smelly enough to be the drains. Bit of a pong expert, is he? I just hope he's expert enough to find out what's causing it before your mum gets back from town and starts on at me again. Oh, God, what a mess. Right, well, thanks again. My pleasure. Mm. I've enjoyed chatting to you. You can come and lose your wedding ring here any time you like. Oh, thanks, but once was enough. <laughs> you won't be coming to the singles night again, then? Oh, no way. I should think I may be here, though. She hasn't been snapped up before, then. I know I'm biased, but... She's a good kid, Armo. I mean, she's a good laugh, like, but, you know, deep down, she's dead caring and that. She could make some fella really happy. Yeah, well, you never know. She might meet him here, eh? Yeah, never know. Right, then. Um, thanks again for going to so much trouble on my account. Like I said, my pleasure. Right, ta -ra. Look, I know we did all right up until the new year, but there's been a slump in bookings and we need to do something about it. Oh, God, why do I feel a Mexican night coming on? Hey, that'd be great. What? Tacky tacos and a band wearing blankets. What's wrong with that? As long as it gets the punters in. Yeah, but what sort of punters, exactly? Well, me for a start. Me and my mates went to this Afro-Caribbean night the other week. It was ace. There you go. Well, I still think it's a question of maintaining the tone. And I think it's a question of maintaining bums on seats. Too right. No you stay up market if we all end up down the dough cube. Now, that's the kind of finer point I can get my head round. So what type of theme should we go for? You know, I'm not entirely sure it's sound business practice to be prompted into anything on the suggestion of a... Well, let's face it, um, a mere waitress. Grassroots opinion, Max. I thought all you socialist yuppie types went for all of that. Anyway, Emma's been promoted up from waitress. Since when? Since she finished the trial period. I thought she uh, deserved a more supervisory role. Oh, well, so much for joint management decisions, eh? Max does have a right to be consulted about these things. Oh, all right then, Max. 
Everyone in favour of having our smartest employee waiting on tables, put your hand up. Right then. So, tell us about these theme nights. Well, there's some that are really naff, but there's some dead good ones. Well, I'm sure they're fascinating, but I really don't have time to hear them right now. I promised David that I'd go round to Audrey's to fix a boiler, remember? Yeah. But I thought you wanted a proper business meeting, Max. And I still do, but preferably when there are only partners present. Yeah, well, the same goes for me as well, all right? Has he got any idea what's up? Uh, says it could be any one of a dozen reasons. Trouble is with. <coughs> All right, Bing, mate. What's going on? Hey, get out of it, you. I am trying to stop that mess-making creature fouling up our neighbourhood. Ah, looks all right. Oh, oh spoke too soon. I'm off. Well, that's it. That's the last straw. As chairman of BRA, I am now officially declaring war on any stray animal that ventures into this area. I take it you're with me on that? Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, standing by to repel all borders, eh? So what do you reckon we should do, Dad? Booby trap the lampposts. Any near us knowing what the problem is, boy? I'm going to clear it. God. Wait till your mum sees this mess now. Right. That's him asleep. Oh, Mum. I'm sorry for walking out on you before. It was just being back in yours and Dee Dee's old place. It brought it all back to me, you know. The bad times. And you and I were still together. And I was dead lonely and that. But we've put the bad times behind us now, haven't we? Bev, the past is dead. Love, my man as to Dee Dee's dead. But that doesn't mean that we need to bury Josh's chances of living in a decent house along with it, does it? Look, I still think that we can make a new home for ourselves on the close. That's the best we can afford, you know. I know it's the practical thing to do. <laughs> it makes sense in me head, but it's just me feelings. I can't get round it. I feel like if we move in, it's like I'm living in your past. OK, fair enough. But look, all I ask is that you think about it, that's all. So it'll be good, too. We could move in for a trial period, if you like. And if you didn't settle, we could think again. All right. I'll think about it. Good girl. Now, to add insult to injury, the stupid bloody animal ran across to the Banks' garden and caused chaos there. You got any wire strippers? Uh, yeah. Try those. Oh, um... It's the other way around, mate. And if this doesn't work, I suggest we call it a day. No, no, we can't. It's, it's vital that Audrey can move back in here. Uh, I mean, she's, you know, very anxious to get home. Well, if you don't mind me saying, it all sounds very heavy. I mean, you... Is this something I should know? No. Well, um... <laughs> actually, um, between you and me, um, I think that I may have unwittingly led Audrey to believe that there was something between us. Quite unintentionally, of course. What, you mean, uh, she's been chasing you around the bungalow? <laughs> oh, can you pass the screw? You know, if Jean even suspected there was something going on, I mean, especially after that incident with you and the, uh, Spanish maid. Quite. You see how important it is that I get her out of our house and back in here? Of course, yeah. The sooner the better, for all our sakes. Right. Shall we give it one last try? OK. Gosh. Lift off. Ah. Ah. You can tell Audrey the heat's back on, and uh, that means the heat's off you, eh? Right. I'll get you tea. Now I'll finish bath and becker. Carl's just saying night-night to her. Where's Sarah, then? She's doing a shift at the pizza parlour for Mick. Mm. And she's out tomorrow night as well. Carl's still wound up about this fella she's seen. Fair dues, though, eh, love? I mean, it was our Carl who packed Sarah up. 
You can't expect a girl of her age to spend the rest of her life on her own. She's not on her own, though, is she? She's got little Becca to think of. It's what's upsetting him. But the chances are he'll meet somebody else. And I can't see him letting Sarah vet his girlfriend, can you? That's different, though, isn't it? So how's it different, then? It just is, that's all. Oh, look at the state of that blooming garden. Makes a change seeing that on your finger these days. Thought you'd given up wearing it for good. Right, slim off out. Brian gone, has he? Mm. Yeah, it got too dark to see anything. What do you say about the puddle? Lake, you mean. Mm -hmm. See ya. See ya. Do you say what was causing it? Well, he couldn't say for definite, not just by looking at it, like. But he said there's a surefire way of finding out what's going on. Hmm? What's that? Well, there's nothing else for it, is there? We're just gonna have to dig up the old garden. There you go, see you again, eh? Yeah. So nice one, Mike. Well, I mean, it's not guaranteed, but it went dead well. And the fellow who interviewed me hinted that I'd get the job, like. Oh, that's great. Uh, can I lock off now if you don't need me anymore? Yeah, sound. Looks like the rush is over. All right, so I'll just go and get my coat. Yeah. So, uh, how did it go with Sarah helping out in that? No problems. So, listen, you two are gonna be able to celebrate, no one? Well, it doesn't sound like a bad idea to me, if you fancy a swift half, like. Uh, yeah, if you like. All right, Mike. Oh, yeah, on your way home. You'll just be in time to say goodnight to Becca if you're off. Right, uh, better go then. See us. See you, Sarah. Thanks for helping out, see. I was just on my way up to the flat, see if you fancy the bevy. Uh, no, mate, I'm a, I'm a bit knackered of being from an interview for a job today. Looks like the might have got it, touch wood. Yeah, it sounds. We go celebrate tonight. Oh, go on, mate. I don't like Billy No, mate, if we go straight home again. And Sarah's been that cocky about this divvy she's fixed herself up with. Uh, yeah, well, some sort of mother to our Becca, isn't she? Slagging around with all sorts. She probably hasn't even told him she's got a kid. Well, she's just using him to prove that she can act like she's still young, free and single. But she's only just met a man, she mightn't be that serious. Yeah, but wait till Sarah gets her claws into him and Becca gets used to him being around. You'll have no chance. So, what are you gonna do, like, if she doesn't tell you what it is? Well, I'll find out eventually. Just watch, and when I do... The Channel 4 book, Brookside Life in the Close, is out now in most bookshops, priced $14.99. Me afternoon off to get this sorted. But we're not sorting anything, are we? This lot's turning into a boating lake, and we're not only finding out what's causing it. This water's spreading faster than we're digging. Oh, come on, son. Your mum's on me back to get it sorted. Don't give up on me now. Why are you eating cereal at this time of the day? Because I can. Because I can do what I like when I like. I have a need to stay. I take it you like having the place to yourself. Mm, you're not kidding. I mean, mum's all right. It's nice now, it's led to someone else's timetable, though. Some move out. Sounds easy, doesn't it? I just feel bad about leaving Mum. Why, though? I mean, it's not like you'd be leaving on her own. And she's got the Sinbad, hasn't she, and your sister? I just can't ever see myself leaving this place. I don't understand what's keeping you here. <laughs> Especially with all that lot coming nosing round the other night. Get out when you can. I suppose you think of my big babies to live with them, don't you? I kind of like big babies. But listen, if you do change your mind about moving out, there's a couple of rooms going in the place I'm in. Yeah? Oh, I can't afford it anyway. 
who can? Student loan city at our place. Anyway, just a thought. All right. Yeah, I've just been doing my Friday rounds, collecting my cleaning wages. Oh, yeah? Well, a little Friday bonus from me. I know what these are in aid of. What do you mean? I'm not daft, Ron. Last night it was chockies. This morning breakfast in bed. You're just trying to bribe me into moving into the close. So how am I doing? You could try diamonds in a little car. I could afford another house then, couldn't I? Bev. Look, love, we can strip the place from top to bottom, throw the lot out and start all over again. Whatever it takes to make you feel like the place is yours. Just think about it. Well, I would think about it if you'd stop bombarding me with the sales pitch every five minutes. OK, fair enough. My lips are sealed. Anyway, we could talk about it later when I take you for this meal, eh? Tonight? Where are we going? Ah, surprise, surprise. Now I've got my suit in the back. I've fixed Julia Brogan up to do the babysitting. All you've got to do is go home, put your glad rags on and meet me back here. Why? Because I'm taking you somewhere first. But where are we going? I've told you that's a surprise. Oh, Ron, tell me. No. Go on, then. I'll see you back here later. But all this is going to have to end sometime, you know. Oh, what? All this whining and dining and whatever else it is you've got planned to persuade me to move into the close. Look, I'll make you a deal. I'll think about it, and if you really want to, we'll even talk about it again tonight. But after that, if I'm still not convinced, you'll agree to take no for an answer, all right? Fair enough. If it's still no after tonight, that'll be it, once and for all. I'll see you later. Ta-da. There's more material in the left leg of me tight. You're not going out in that, are you? You used to like taking me out, innit? You were out with your husband then, though, weren't you? Yeah, and well, my husband decided he didn't want me anymore, didn't he? Come ahead, Carl, so it's getting dark soon. Oh, gee. Now Eddie says I shouldn't take sides, but let's face it, she doesn't look much like the responsible mother of a four-year-old in that guess, or does she? So where's she off to, though? Oh, God knows. Says she's got a fella. That was quick, loggy girl. Mm. Who is he? <laughs> Won't say. Be minding I'll curl up something rotten and keeping it a secret. Well, don't worry, when I find myself a fella, I'll be taking a full page out in the paper. Hey, is that today's? I'll have a look at these stars. Go on, then. No. Weak has its bad moments. Are they the rubbish, these? How come they don't know it's me night off? Well, must be some Virgos working. I mean, the horoscopes have to cover your all, don't they? Go on. But despite downtrends in your career, your love life takes a definite upturn. Well, that's me down the singles night, no messing. I thought you just said it was a load of rubbish. Hey, who am I to argue with destiny? So will you come with us again tonight, then? The last week. I ain't been losing the wedding minimum. I'm staying well away. I hate to happen to lie to Eddie. And anyway, you'll stand a better chance of cutting off if you're on your own. God, yeah, who says? Well, destiny does for the stars. I know, we haven't finished yet. I have. Going out tonight, aren't I? So, uh, it's all right if I knock off, then? Oh, oh no, Ed, love, you can't leave me past you in that mess. I'll just keep going till it goes dark, eh? Either that or start building the ark. Slave labour, this. It's not my fault we've got Lake Bloody Windermere out here. You see, that's what I want. A fella who'll do anything for me without making a fuss about it. Well, that's, uh, that's all my goods and chattels, I think. I expect you'll both be quite glad to get me out from under your feet. We'll miss having you. Won't we, David? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Well, I must say, it's been a joy being here. You've both made me very welcome in my hour of need, inviting me into your little home. We've been happy to help. Well, I suppose I mustn't impose any longer. This is farewell, then. Oh, au revoir. Oh, surely. I mean, we'll be seeing you at the over 55s. Oh, yes, the over 55s. I sometimes think if it wasn't for that, the well of loneliness would close right up over my head. Oh, look, don't worry, Jean. I know you've got your own lives to lead. And I ought to be getting back to my own rather drab existence. Well, I'll, um, I'll be on my way then. David will drive you home. 
No, I, I can't. Uh, sorry, the uh, car's out of action, I'm afraid. I'll phone a taxi for you. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure I've got enough with me. Oh, uh... don't worry, Audrey. I'm happy to pay for it. Excuse me. I need to get a tissue. Talk about making a meal out of it. No, don't be so unkind. She's genuinely sorry to be leaving. Oh, hello. Can I have a taxi, and please, to six Brookside out of Close? Yes, it's a local trip. Since I decided I'd probably pop a major artery if I had to spend one minute longer with that infuriating bloody... Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, that's great. Thanks very much. Uh, Audrey, your cab will be here in a moment. Oh, thank you, David. Thank you both for everything. I think we ought to wait outside, you know. <laughs> you know what these taxis are like. If you're not ready and waiting, they drive off like a shot. <laughs> Welcome to these split ends, and no should have had me in cuffs. Will you go? Let's face it, what's the point of me parading me pay around the singles night again? I mean, seriously, who am I gonna meet? A hairdresser, if you're lucky. Look, if you don't go, you won't know, will you? So go home, get changed, and get yourself down there. See you, Mum. See you, Dad. I've rang Brian. And trip sludge all over my living room, I bet. Look, I've checked the back of ours and there's nothing there. So he says the problem's definitely coming from under next door's patio. Mm. I better get round there and get him to do something about it. Looks like that's where all the water's coming from. No, but they're away. No, Beth's still around. Yeah, but it's Simbad's place now, isn't it? You can't just go round there shouting the odds of Beth. Yeah, I suppose so. Look, you'll just have to clean up out there the best you can for the time being. All right. Bye-bye, Jean. Oh. <laughs> I'll see you soon, I hope. <laughs> Bye-bye, David. I hope someday you'll be able to think of some way I can thank you for all your hospitality. Well, um, bye, Audrey. Bye. Thank God. I'm sure they felt this way when Mafeking was relieved. Oh, she's not that bad. <laughs> I've never known you so inhospitable. I know. I'm sorry. It's, it's just that I missed it being you and I together, you know. Anyway, I don't know how you feel, but um, I could use an early night. Oh, well, now you come to mention it. We haven't drunk that lovely wine you bought yet. Well, we could drink it in bed, like we did on our honeymoon night. Mm. Come on. Uh, oh, for God's sake, don't try and pick me up. We won't either of us be fit for anything. <laughs> Hi, hi, Bing. Just the man I need. My no. sentiments entirely. Bing, can you give us hand a minute, please? <laughs> you better go. I'll put the supper on. Don't worry. I'll keep things warm for you. Ron, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm a bit tied up at the moment, actually. Yeah, look, mate, I'm trying to convince Bev to move in here with me, aren't I, eh? And tonight's my last chance. I tell you what, this doesn't work, mate. Nothing will. Really? You really ought to come and take a look at our place, you know. It'd be great if you moved in. Yeah, I know. But what if I did leave home and moved in? Well, we might split up. And we might not. And anyway, us splitting up would be just as hard wherever we were living, wouldn't it? I suppose it were many people. Oh, thousands, and that's just this week. I cast them off like old tights. No, I've had one, well, maybe two serious relationships. At least I thought they were serious at the time. How about you? Just a couple. Same kind of story, really. Why don't you come and at least look at the house? Meet some of the others. I know even without seeing it that I'd love to move in with you. It goes without saying. It's just such a big move. There's so much to consider. You're a real little worrier, aren't you? I suppose I am. But if you knew how practical I had to be, you know, helping Mum out when she was on her own and that. And now she isn't. So you can stop behaving like such an old biddy and start enjoying your own life. Yes, Ron, all systems go. Oh, hey, Ron, what is this? Where do we go? What you, you'll see, you'll see. Bing, thanks for all the help, mate. Help for what? <laughs> What's this?
Friends and neighbours, as you all know, I have been endeavouring to persuade my dear Beverly here to move into this handsome abode. You're wrong. This is emotional blackmail trying to convince me in front of other people. And she, bless her heart, has been reluctant on account of thinking that this place could never be her own. Well, I now call upon the said beloved to unveil what I hope she will see as absolute proof that this could be her true home. So come on, then. What do you think's going to change me mind? Well done. Jolly good. It, it's certainly a feature, isn't it? Oh, Bev, I'm sorry, love. Oh, don't cry. I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, Bev, come on, love. Cheer up. Look, we don't have to move into the house if you don't want to. Forget the house. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You do it to me every time, don't you? Hey? Because of Bev, Ron. It's dead romantic. Oh, I'm all emotional. Don't do things by arms, do you? <laughs> so what do you think, then? Oh, go on, then. <laughs> Welcome to the neighbourhood. Seconded, absolutely. I shall let you have a Residence Association application form pronto. Well, um, if you'll excuse us both, we'll see you later. I knew you'd see sense in the end, you know. Thanks for agreeing. But only on one condition. I get to redecorate from top to bottom and throw away any furniture I don't like. No problem. And number two. If I still don't like it, we move. This is a trial period. Fair dues, but I'll tell you now, I will have this place that smart that you... And will... number three. I want a new bed. There is no way I am sleeping in singles. Well, amen to that. So? Welcome to Casa Bevron, my <laughs> sweet. Come here. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> I seem to remember we had similar plans of our own, didn't we? I rather think we did. <laughs> Oh, all right, love. Hiya. Find our mess we've got ourselves into over here. Yeah? Yeah, this flooding problem's getting worse all the time. I, uh, I think the problem could be over on your side, you know. Well, why'd you say that? It's dry over here. Uh, yeah, I know, but the cause of what's happening on our side could be under there, like... I was just wondering if I could take a look under your flags. I've knocked a couple of times, but I keep no, missing it. No, don't even think about it. Well, there's nothing wrong over here. And besides, more when you're making a big mess. Yeah, well, I'll make good any mess I make, like, it's just... Well, it's getting worse. Even brought the washing line down, only just missed it now, Becca. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't see it's our problem. <sighs> Fair enough. Only us, like. Bounds. Usually with one of these two European airlines. These cheaper flights usually involve a brief stopover to the press, Prague, Yes. Down yeah, but couldn't stand hanging around the house any longer. You don't mind me coming around here? Uh, no, no, just make yourself a coffee or something. Only take me a minute getting ready. Uh, don't rush on my account. Oh, who's that now? Open up, mate. It's me, Carl. I thought you said you didn't know you were coming in. I didn't. Is anybody in or what? Look, just get rid of him. I'll keep out the way. Have you got a floozy in here or what? I thought you'd like an appetizer before I whisk you off into town. Eh, uh, no, not tonight, mate. Why not? Oh, I get it. Have you got lined up? Nobody. So we're going to sniff together then, can't we? Well, no, I've got a bit of a cold coming on and I just wanted to, uh, you know, flop out in front of the telly and that. Uh... Okay, your company then? Eh, uh, no, you're all right, mate. You don't want to be sitting around here, do you? What are friends for? Anyway, it's either that or sitting at home with me, Mum and Dad. Sarah's gone swanning off with this fella again. She still won't say who it is. You gonna get some clothes on, then? Uh, yeah, OK. I don't want you putting me off my ale by having to look at your hairy legs all night. Uh, yeah, OK, me so uh, I'll just go get dressed. First stop must be at the imposing Egyptian museum on the banks of the Nile. Go early. It's popular with both... <laughs> Here again, then. Why 
you know, don't make it seem like I've got nowhere else to go. Well, you'd happen to have you like me. Let's be honest, we'd both be somewhere else if we weren't desperate. Well, I'm not desperate. I just fancy the drink. It's as good a pint in here as any man, isn't it? But you said the air was cracking here last week. Well, I'm going for punishment, aren't I? Anyway, what's your excuse? Well, I've got to be here, haven't I? I'm under direct orders from Destiny. Say him again? Yeah, Tor. All right, mate. Good to see you in again. Hey, look, I'm not a regular here, like. So what if you are? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody is in the same boat, aren't they? Yeah, I suppose so. It's funny, Mum. How's it going with you? Oh, all right. I'm overworked, underpaid, and bored out my skull in between. How about you? Oh, you know, not next time. Well, I suppose I ought to give me horoscope a chance and mingle, eh? And anyway, I don't want to cramp your style by making it look like you fixed up, do I? Hope you get lucky. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You just seem a bit, I don't know. Sorry. Do you never get any peace round here? All they wanted was for us to have the place to ourselves for the weekend, and then you've got him next door wanting to dig the patio up. So let him. Ew, I can't, can I? I promised Mum I'd look after the place. Well, she's hardly going to be bothered about a few flags coming up on the patio, is she? Don't you get on with him, then? Eddie? Yeah, he's all right. I just thought, you know, I, I've never seen you kick off at anybody like that before. It's not him. I was really looking forward to us having the weekend to ourselves without anyone interfering. So come over to my place. You could stay the weekend, meet some of the others and try out the house. Well, I suppose I could come just for the weekend. And be staying around here, people nosing round every five minutes. Great. Who knows? I might even be able to persuade you to move in for good. <laughs> Our Rosie was over the moon when you found a wedding ring. Yeah? Right. Just look here, came across it, wasn't it? How is she? Rosie, oh, she's all right. So, do you get out much? I mean, running a pub and that? I have a night off now and again. I usually just crash in front of the telly. Well, that's no good. You should get out. No one to go out with. Is that right? Well, you're working in the right place. I usually only go out myself on darts nights. Ladies' darts team, you know. Yeah, great. Too fun to lie with these things. Yeah, well, it's quite a responsibility, me being captain of the team and that. Yeah, but it is. Uh, that fellow with me. I think he's leaving. See you, Mum. Oh, didn't you manage to cook? Never mind, better luck next time, eh? Seems like a nice fella. Yeah, but I wasn't with him, I mean, not with him, you know. And anyway, like I was saying about running the darts team and that, it takes a lot of organising. Like, at the moment, we're stuck for somewhere to play our home matches. Aren't you attached to a local, then? Yeah, usually only it's being done up. Our Rosie's worried the girls will get out of practice. You're Rosie in this team, then, is she? Yeah, amongst others. Anyway. Listen, um... If you don't get fixed up, you could always consider me, you know. Yeah? Yeah, why not? I mean, I've got a dartboard stuck there doing nothing. Oh, you mean consider your pub for darts matches? Why not, eh? I mean, it'll bring me extra custom in on match nights. Oh, that's dead nice of that. Nah. Be nice to see your team in here any time you want to use the place. Oh, hey, you've really made me nice. Yeah, well, look, you mentioned it, eh? Must have been fate. Yeah. In general, pressure will remain low over Britain, so most districts will have service. Shall I help you some more, then? Eh, no, not for me, mate. Well, no, I call must have gone to me guts. I might as well have stayed at home with me mum and dad, babysitting Becca. I'm sorry, I'm not much company, like. I'm not kidding. Well, this is too exciting for me. I'm off for a swift half, then home. Right, I'll see you out dead, mate. Yeah, look, we'll nip into town next week, eh? It'll take my mind off this divvy series knocking about with. Eh, uh, yeah, see you, mate. Oh, God, I thought he was never gonna go. I've read this about four times. Do you hear what he said? He's dead set on finding out who you're seeing. Yeah. How's he gonna do that? I don't know. It's too late to tell him now. What worries me is what happens if he does find out. Oh, 
Come on in, Eddie, love. It's freezing out there. This is really starting to get to me now. I mean, where the hell is all this water coming from? It's just be lapping over into the conservatory soon. Yeah, well, there's nothing you can do in the dark, is there? No. But I can have another word with next door. See if I can persuade that young Beth to let me start investigating on their side. Why don't you just leave it for tonight? Not unless we want the house floating away. I can't wait for you to see the house. You're gonna love it. Then it's goodbye to this place. Well, come on then. All right, all right, I'm coming. Oh, it's no use, Ed Love. There's obviously nobody in. Look, there's no lights on or nothing. There's got to be something wrong with the rear. All right, but there's nothing you can do about it if there's nobody in. Yeah, well, I want this flooding nonsense sorted out once and for all. We can't wait till they get back off their holidays. So, I'm just gonna have to dig this lot up myself. Brookside, the magazine, is out now with features and profiles on the cast priced at £1.95. Two hours of comedy begins after the break here on 4 with Ellen finding that a visit to the dentist can be a pleasurable experience. Meanwhile, over on ITV shortly, drama with The Glass Virgin. Time for my beautiful wife to sit up and enjoy breakfast in bed. Have you been eating those magic mushrooms again? Can you hear that, Jean? Hear what? The sound of silence. No Audrey Manners in the bathroom doing a Edith Piaf impersonations, isn't it marvellous? Well, I must say I could get used to this. Only the best for you, madame. <laughs> David, what have you been up to? Sorry. The last time you gave me breakfast in bed was in Spain, the morning after I accused you of flirting with that emaciated maid. Jean, do I really need an excuse to spoil the love of my life? Well, maybe I just have a suspicious mind, but I have a gut instinct that you're feeling guilty about something. The only thing I'm feeling guilty about is not paying you enough attention. Now that we have the house to ourselves, I intend to make up for it. I am going to spoil you rotten. See? There's the proof. What proof? That puddle on the patio. Yeah? What about it? Well, it hasn't rained all weekend, has it? And when Brian came to look at it, he said the problem was coming from their side. Yeah, but they've only got a little tiny puddle. We've got a bloody big duck pond here. But I've already dug our garden up, haven't I? So if the problem's not coming from here, then it must be coming from theirs. And that tiny little puddle, as you call it, is all the evidence I need. Where are you going? To get me spade. I'll try and tidy up our garden a bit, then I'm going to make a start on digging up next door. You can't just go and dig their garden up without asking, and Beth told you to leave it alone. Stop worrying, I'll leave everything as I found it. They won't even know I've been in. Hiya, babe. What are you doing up so early? I couldn't sleep. I'm in love. Oh, why? Copped off the singles night, did you? Aye, aye. What's all this? Never you mind. It's a girly thing. So, uh, you've copped off, then? What's his name? None of your business. Oh, go on. Look, if you won't tell me what his name is, at least let me know what his guide dog's called. Hey, you cheeky oh. get. So, have you copped or not? Yeah, well, not exactly, but I'm sure he's after me. Who is? Kevin, the pub manager. 
say we asked you out then? Yeah, well, not exactly, but he did say we could use his pub tonight for our darts match, and that amounts to the same thing in my book. Tonight? That's brilliant. He must fancy me, mustn't he? Why else would he say we could use his pub? You don't waste any time. And I don't care if we've got to drag people off the street. We're going to be there tonight. I can't let my calf down. Mm. Looks like you're getting new neighbours. Well, the old ones have moved out. Cheers. So, what's going on here then? Me and Ron are moving in today. Oh, mm -hmm. really? So, um. Yeah, Dee Dee's staying at her cousin's for a while, so. Uh, oh, well, uh... is so, when's the housewarming do then? Well, not until this place has been stripped and redecorated from top to bottom and inside out. And then it will look like a little palace. <laughs> Looks like you've got your way cut out then. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, by the way, the darts match is back on tonight. Oh, don't suppose you'll be able to make it with moving and everything, will you? Can't see why not. I mean, need something to help me wind down, don't I? They say moving out is the most stressful thing you can do. And uh, what about me, madam? Well, you can wind down while you're watching the telly and babysitting Josh tonight, can't you? What time do you want me? Eh, we'll give you a knock about six. May as well go together now, we're neighbours. Smashing. See you later then. Ta-ra, oh. yeah. ta-ra! Ta ta Seems weird, them moving in there. Wonder what Dee Dee makes of it all. Oh, God knows. Wonder if the beer's quick in a grave. Right, listen. I'll get on the phone to the Bull Terriers and you go and round up Jean Crosby and anyone else you can lay your hands on. OK, see you in a bit. All right, sir, i So, welcome to Casa Verbron. Hey, you don't want me to carry it over the threshold again, do you? After your performance last time, I think it'd be better if I carried you. <laughs> Still seems weird, though. I keep expecting Dee Dee to look through one of the windows. Yeah, well, there's no chance of that, is the love? She's well gone now. Go and say I'm sorry. Do you think we're doing the right thing moving in? Come on, Bev. I don't want you having any second thoughts. You, me, and our Josh are going to be in our element here. Oh, there is one other thing. I'm not having her bedroom. and have the big room at the front. Anything you say, my sweet? Mm -hmm. Great news, Jean. A woman from the Environmental Health Office just called. They're sending over someone this morning to assess the problem of canine excrement on the close. Oh, good. You see, I told you all those letters and phone calls would make them sit up and take notice. Major! I could hear your stalwart tones a mile off. <laughs> Audrey. Surprise, surprise! I started this morning. Isn't it wonderful news? Uh, when was all this decided? Well, Ron said I could choose who I wanted as an assistant. Naturally, I was the obvious choice. Jean knew all about my horticultural background. And Audrey's trained. She worked in a florist for years. Well, that's, that's convenient, isn't it? I knew you'd be pleased. I'll be able to pop over and see you in my lunch hour. We can have one of our little chats and a pot of Earl Grey. Yes. Look, I'm afraid I've got a dash. I'm uh, expecting someone from the Environmental Health Department. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Hiya, Dave. Oh, hello there. Hiya, Jean. Sorry to bother you. Have you got anything planned for tonight? Not a lot. Oh, great, because the darts match is back on. He's still into it. Well, I don't think I'll get a better offer. Oh, we're still two players down, though. Uh, got any suggestions? You got anything on for tonight, Audrey? Oh. Well, as you know, Jean, public houses are not really my cup of tea. Oh, but you've been doing us a huge favour. It would only be for this once. Well, uh... Oh, come on. It's only a friendly and we usually have a laugh, don't we? Well, I suppose you did give me the opportunity here, and one good turn does deserve another. Oh, that's brilliant. We'll knock yours about six-ish. Thanks again. You've really helped us out. See you later. I really must insist this is a one-off, Jean. If my friends at the Operatic Society find out about this, I'll never live it down. Ron, what are you doing in there? I'm in here, love. Well, hurry up. I've got a heavy box here. What are you doing? You ready for this? Ready for what? Close your eyes. Closed. Come on. Keep them closed. Okay, you can open them now. Oh, Ron, when did you get this? <laughs> yeah. Had it delivered this morning, didn't I? Oh, it's gorgeous. Hey, I didn't realise you had such good taste. Oh, I chose you, didn't I? I am going to feel like Alexis from Dynasty sleeping on this. Mm. So, would you rip me out to christen it then? When we finished unpacking. And then you might as well start the decorating. No point having a bed like this without the wallpaper to match. Oh. Hiya, Pat. Hello. Guess what? I'm your new neighbour. Since when? Since today. So I've no excuse for being late for work now, will I? Hi, Trish. Hi. Uh, so, when was all this decided? 
Well, behind me back, to be brutally frank. It took some convincing, I can tell you, but, well, once we got rid of all the DD stuff, put our own personality into the place, should make the world a difference. Hey, do you want to come up and see me bed? It's like something from a loan magazine. Sorry, I can't. I'm late enough as it is. I've got to get Alice down to the clinic just for a checkup. So, uh, see you later. I wonder killed her to come in for five minutes. Ah, I wouldn't let it worry you, love. She's probably just jealous. <laughs> Feels real and miserable to get back here, doesn't it, after your place? Well, at least it's just you and me. I feel like we've hardly had five minutes to ourselves. Well, we have now. Well, thanks, Viv. What for? For a really nice weekend. I can't remember the last time I had such a life. I've really enjoyed myself. So have I. So is the office still open, then? Do you think the others have minded being their new lodger? Oh, are you serious? Well, yeah, I've been thinking about it. It's about time I moved out of my own space. I'm going to tell Mum as soon as she gets back from Ireland. Oh, Beth, now that's brilliant. <laughs> Will your mum be all right about it? Uh, no, I think she'll be all right. I mean, her and Sinbad are getting on better now. She's probably glad to have me out of the way. Great. Let's go into town. I'll treat you to a housewarming prezi. Mm, how can I say no to that? You've really made my day. Dad, are you sure you want to get rid of all that? There's some good stuff there. The only thing I want to keep is that piano. Should look quite trendy with a coat of white gloss. Yeah, but it just seems such a waste. Tough. Dee Dee wanted any of this. She'd have taken it with her. Good news. I think my campaign to clamp down on canine excrement is beginning to bear some fruit. You are? Uh, I think he means dog muck, love. That chap I've just been talking to, he's from the environmental health people. I showed him the evidence and I didn't beat about the bush. I said there's no doubt that corky old clown is to blame. Dead right, Bing. But he simply can't be allowed to get away with it. The health risks are phenomenal. It can cause blindness in children, for goodness sake. Good on you, Bing. I'm not having our Josh going blind just because of that Jimmy Corkill. Absolutely, Beverly. Ron, um, I don't mean to pry, but how long were you planning on keeping all these uh, things out here? Well, to be honest with you, Bing, I don't really want to get rid of any of it. A lot of that stuff's got sentimental value to me. I mean, look at this radiogram. It took me indeed years to pay off this. OK. I know it looks a bit old-fashioned now, but I'm telling you something, it's going to be worth a few bob one day, this. And now Bev just wants to sling it all out. Isn't there any way you could store it? I suppose I could stick it in the garage, couldn't I? Yes. Fancy giving us a hand? Yes, of course. Very neighbourly, but look, we'll have to be quick before you know who finds out. Oh, right, yes. You ready? Yep. Up. And where do you think you're going? Eh, uh, I thought I'd just stick a few bits and pieces in the garage for old time's sake, you know. <laughs> no way, Ron. I've told you, I'm not having any of their cast-offs. Now, this is going to the tip, and that's all there is to it. I'm going to pick up our Josh from Lynn's. Ah, well, I suppose it was worth a try. Ron, if you're really desperate to keep some of these things as souvenirs, I think you should. I'll tell you what, you could always stick it up in the loft. I'm sure she can look there. That's a good idea, that. <laughs> Come on, better get on with it before she gets back. Right. Ready. Um. Ah, just in time. Time for what? Follow me. Dad, there's nothing left to dig out here. We're not digging out here. You're gonna help me lift next door's patio up. That's where the problem is. Oh, hey, Dad. Never mind, Dad, hey, Dad. It's not often I ask you to do something for me. Come on, son, we'll have it up in no time. See the bed? Oh, right. <laughs> um, what's this here for? Uh, I was just cleaning out some old stuff from the loft, you know. All <laughs> oh, right. It's just through here. All right, love. Hiya. Hiya, Ron. Hello, love. Hello, Ron. <laughs> Ron, how long do I have to stay up here? I'm rather in need of the lavatory, old son. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the all clear as soon as I can, Bing. Just move away from the attic case they see you. 
It's gorgeous. Very swish. I didn't realise you were the romantic type. <laughs> yes. Lots of things you don't know about me. <laughs> did you hear that? Uh, did I hear what, love? It was a bump from up there. <laughs> You're not haunted, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we don't want to be late. We better make a move. That's right, yeah. Better get a move on, love. You don't want to be late. And don't worry about Josh's tail. <laughs> Wouldn't it be best if we left this till tomorrow? It's too dark to be doing anything now. Stop trying to look for excuses. You don't even know what you're looking for. Who says? Anyway, why are you in such a rush? Plan on going out tonight? Can't can I tell Sarah on a becket again? Is she going out? Yeah, probably with this new fella of hers. So she still hasn't told you who it is yet? I know it's got nothing to do with me if Sarah's seen someone else, but I just think it's unfair if she uses you and my mum as unpaid babysitters. Oh, I see. So it's all right for you to take advantage of us, but it's a different kettle of fish when she does it. Look, son, I didn't want you to split up to start with, but as you're both free agents now, you can both do whatever you want to do. And I think it's about time we all started accepting that fact, your mother included. Now, come on. Better get a move on if you want to get this finished. <laughs> 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 Heaven knows how I was persuaded into coming here. Oh, just relax. I'm sure you'll end up enjoying yourself. I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> oh, God, here he is. I feel sick. Oh, relax now. Just be yourself. Evening, ladies. You made it, then? Yeah, thanks very much for this, Kev. Really appreciate it. Any time. <laughs> These are on the house. Oh, no, don't be daft. You've already helped us out. Look, I should be buying you one. I insist. A welcome drink for our new resident darts team. Oh, well, in that case, we'll come more often. <laughs> Are you already a fella, remember? I was only being friendly. Hey, you fancy a little warm up before the other shower get here? If we must. I'll follow you over now. Hey, old, I take it you're still a virgin all of this then? <laughs> yeah, you'll pick her up in no time. Dead simple. Of course it's dead simple. That's why dead simple people want it. Quite in here tonight, isn't it? Except for us lot, like. Yeah, usually is on a Tuesday. I suppose it might liven up a bit later on. Yeah, it might do. <laughs> I feel like a fish out of water. I've absolutely nothing in common with these women. Nonsense. They're really very nice. So then, score with your mouth. How does she know him? Well, she doesn't really. She's only just met him. She's besotted with him. She's talked about nothing else these last few days. Where did she meet him? Oh, in here, I think. And is he into her? Yeah. Seems to be. Uh -oh. Oh. Here we are, the Bull Terriers. Number one round, boys. I hope you've got your boxing gloves with you, Lord. These lot are terrible losers. <laughs> Sorry to give the game away like that, Ronna. Afraid I just lost my balance. Yeah, it's all right, Bing. I'm just glad you didn't hurt yourself, mate. No, no, I'm fine. Well, I must admit, it did give me a bit of a jolt. Not half as much as the girls, though, eh? <laughs> See the faces on them. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, looks like all this stuff's gonna have to go to the tip after all, eh? Evening. Oh, you again. I found yet another deposit of canine excrement right outside my daughter's front door today. So? What are you telling me for? You think our cracker was the only dog in Liverpool? I think it's only fair to inform you that I was visited by a gentleman from the Environmental Health Department today. And I'm pretty sure you'll be hearing from them very soon. Oh, will I now? Ignorant swine. Well, the man's got no respect for himself or anybody else. If there was any justice left in this world, he'd be doing life behind bars now. I don't think you'll be quite so smug when the environmental health people initiate their litigation. I admit it, Badge, you haven't got a clue what you're looking at here. But it's bugging me now. If you can just dig a little deeper. I feel like shady doing this in the middle of the night. Come on, let's put these few flags back here. Leave it to the professionals. Hi, hi, boys. What's going on here? Come on, oh, double four, and we've won. Oh, sorry! Oh, sorry. 
Sorry, you're a natural, you know. Oh, I don't think so. It's just a classic case of beginner's luck. No, oh. you should join the team full time. You're drawn rings around that Mandy Jord, Ash. I don't think my diary would allow it. I do have rather a hectic schedule. Well done. Didn't know you were such an expert. Hey, there's loads of things you didn't know about me. I'm a woman of many talents. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, we can't complain, considering we haven't played for ages. Bit of a fluke, really. Can I get you a drink? Toast your victory. Oh, well, thanks very much, but um, I promised Eddie it wouldn't be late. Can I give you a lift, then? I wouldn't mind getting out for a bit of fresh air. Well, if you're absolutely sure. No problem. Great. I'll just tell the others. Thanks very much. My pleasure. I'll just get my keys. Oh, never again. Pub snugs and dart boards are not my idea of a social occasion. Oh, I do think you're judging them too harshly. They're very nice, you know. Well, I take it you won't be joining the team permanently, then? Absolutely not. I don't know how you tolerate those women. The language is choice. You never hear things like that in Blundell Sands. You see, you and I, Jean, we are sophisticated. We enjoy the good life. Now, if those women want to enjoy a game designed for beer-bellied men, that's fine. But it's certainly not appropriate for the likes of you and me. And as for Mrs. Banks' sister, she's so common. Anything else you'd like to say about me and me mates? Well, I, uh, um, save your breath, love, I ain't every word. You want to be grateful you're an old boot. If you were a few years younger, I'd rag you all around these toilets and send you home in an ambulance. Do you hear me? I think we ought to go. Yeah, go on, get back to Blundell Sands, and if you've got any sense, she'll stay there. <laughs> What's going on? Listen, pal, I don't care what you're doing. I'm not interested in excuses. I don't have to give you any excuses. All I'm trying to do is stop my house from being flooded out. Yeah, and all I'm doing is keeping an eye on my mate's house. He doesn't want to be coming back from his holidays and find his patio wreck, does he? As far as I'm concerned, you're trespassing you and him. And you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? That's slander, that. Slander? I caught you in our house red-handed. You got done for it. Come on, Dad, let's get off of here. What's going on? What do you think you're doing? I did knock first, love. I'm convinced all this flooding's coming from here. You've got no right to be here. I've already told you once. I mean, what do you think you're doing, just coming into somebody's garden and digging it up without any permission? See, I told you, you were out of order. And what are you doing here again? I'm just looking after Sinbad's property. I'm really sorry, love, but something had to be done. You've seen the state of our garden. I thought I was doing us all a favour. I don't care what you think. This is private property and you're all trespassing. <sighs> now, can you please just go away? Go on, move! You as well. I'm just doing my job. I promised me mates. It's my house. I can look after it myself, thank you. All right, love. Don't be upsetting yourself. We're going. I'll get someone out tomorrow to sort it. Come on, Cracker. Come on, girl. We know where we're not wanted. Come on. Are you all right? What does it look like? Cheers, Kev. Yeah, nice one, Kev. Nice. Now I feel ashamed. I'll phone a taxi from yours. You don't mind taking our mill back to Ayres, do you, Kev? No, of course not. Thanks, Kev. Night. I'll ring you tomorrow. I've really enjoyed tonight. Makes a change to get out. You'll have to do it more often. Well, I would, but there's never anyone to go out with. Everybody I know is either married or courting, and I'd look a right Billy New Mates going out on my own. Tell me about it. Where do you think I got the inspiration for a singles night at the pub? So, are you uh, doing anything tomorrow night? No. Why? Well, how would you fancy coming out for a bevy with me? Yeah, all right, why not? I don't understand if you can't, you know, if you're busy, like... No, I said, yeah. we go out. What was that all about? Why'd you get so uptight? I just can't believe the cheek of him. I told him last week to leave the garden alone. I mean, who do you think he is? Well, look on the bright side, hey? You won't have to put up with him for much longer. When shall I tell the others you're moving in? I'm not. What? Look, I know this is going to sound really weird. But I can't. I don't know what I was thinking of in the first place. 
I've changed my mind. But I thought you Look, just I'm said... sorry, but that's all there is to it. There's no way I can leave mum on her own. No, if you don't mind, I just want to be on my own, please, tonight. All right, then. If that's what you want. Yeah, it is. Channel 4 video, Brookside The Women, features classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside together with brand new material. And it's available now from most video shops. I'm sorry to go around so early, but, but I couldn't stop thinking about last night. <laughs> to be honest, when you said you didn't want to move into the house, I wasn't sure whether you meant you wanted to finish with me too. I just need to know for sure. Of course not. Look, Viv, I was jumping the gun when I said I'd move in with you. Well, we haven't really known each other very long, have we? And things have been really difficult since Dad died. I just don't feel that I can leave my mum, not yet. I was just worried it might have been your way of finishing with me. Well, it's not. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Come here. I never realised she was so highly strung. Should have heard the way she spoke to us. Yeah, well, if you'd listened to me in the first place and got someone who knows what they're doing, none of this would have happened. Yeah, all right, you've made your points. I'll get on the phone now. Morning. Well, well what? What do you think? Did anything happen last night? It might have done. Oh, just tell me. I've got a date with him tonight. Honest? There's no need to sound so surprised. He's picking me up at half past seven. Oh, I can't believe it. You've got yourself a fella at last. Oh. Isn't it about time you started fixing that bedroom ceiling? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it in a minute. I don't know what you were thinking of, letting Bingo in the loft. In the age of him, the fool could have killed him. Yeah, you know what he's like, don't you? Eh? He insisted. It wasn't my idea. Uh, I don't know why you want to keep all that old stuff for Dee Dee's anyway. I've told you, love, it's just sentimental value, that's all. It doesn't mean to say I want Dee Dee back in my life or anything, but... Well, it is part of my life. I just want to make a fresh start. I don't want to see reminders of her staring at me. Yeah, OK. I promise you I'll get somebody around to shift it. Honest. Your wish is my command. You work today? Well, I was supposed to be, but Pat Farnham gave me the morning off so I can take him to the clinic. That rash isn't getting any better. <laughs> I'll run you down there in the mobile, if you like. Oh, I feel ashamed being seen in that. I've told you, we should get a little run around. And we've spoken about that, haven't we? How are we going to afford it? Just think of all the money we'll save in the long run. I mean, the amount of taxis I have to get. And what is the point of having a posh attached garage and no car to put in it? <coughs> I'll get it. Oh, Dad. Come on, my son. Hey. Your mother's soft or something. How are we going to afford a car? We told her. 
Come on. Hi, Hi, Rose. Hi, Ron. Did she tell you about us thrashing the Bull Terriers last night? Yeah, she told me about your moan early thrashing that ordinary one and all. <laughs> she deserved it by all accounts. Stuck up cow. Mind you, I wouldn't fancy getting on the wrong side of your mouth. Mm. Yeah, I was going to suggest we all go out tonight, you know, celebrate last night's victory. Now I'm who's got a date with Kev. The pub manager? Go away. Yeah. Well, it doesn't stop me and you going for a drink, does it? Er, uh, two nights out in a trot. Oh, I know. Terrible, isn't it? Report me to the social services for being an unfit mother. We could even go for a meal. You know, I still haven't been to that new restaurant at Max Farnham and Barry Grant's. Nice one. We'll do that then, shall we? I mean, they'll be made up with the custom. Yeah, all right. It's a date. Uh, bit expensive, that, isn't it, girls? Oh, listen to the old skinflint. Money's for enjoying, you know, not sticking under your mattress till you're too old to spend it. All right, all right. You win. I give in. Right, my son. Looks like me and you are set for another night in our home, then, eh? Here. Home sweet home, eh? Yeah, strange to be back. Can I go on that for me? I'll be at school, love. And so should you be. Go on. Get yourself in and change. You'll just have to go in for half a day. <sighs> you glad to be back? Yeah, I suppose so. I really enjoyed the holiday. I'm just glad we're friends again. Well, it did us good to get away for a while. So us out our problems. Yeah, expected to be a while before everything's completely back to normal with us, though. Well, like you say, we're still mates, aren't we? And, uh, Well, if it's all right with you, I think I'll stay in the extension for the time being. It's best to take things one step at a time, eh? Yeah, if that's what you want. Yeah, it is. And you know how I feel about you, but I just can't get this Kenny Maguire thing out of my mind, you know? Oh, thank God you're back. Oh, why, what's happened? Good Lord. What's caused all this? It's coming from next door. I've tried to sort it out, but then young Beth came back and roared at me. I couldn't believe it. I was only trying to do them a favour. Between you and me, I've never liked that girl at all. She's far too bohemian for my taste. Well, in my day, you'd get a clip around the ear all if you spoke to an adult like that. Absolutely. Well, I was coming round to tell you about my meeting with the environmental health people, but I can see you've got more important things on your mind. As long as you can say that again. Well, Eddie, as chairman of the Residents Association, if there's anything at all I can do to assist... Ah, well, thanks anyway, Dave, but it's all boxed off. I think it's best if we leave it to the professionals now. You know, I can't believe it. When Dee Dee packed her bags, I thought we'd seen the last of the Dixons. I thought a nice, normal couple kept themselves to themselves might move in, but no, no, no. What do we get instead? Ron and Beth. Oh, well, give them a chance. They only moved in yesterday. Well, I must have done something really awful in a past life to deserve this. Oh, hi. Hiya. I don't suppose you know where I'll find Barry, do you? I've just knocked it is, but there's no answer. No, there wouldn't be. He's in Birmingham today on business. Oh, typical. He asked me to drop these around. Would you mind passing them on to him? No, no. What is it? Oh, just some ideas he wants for this new summer menu of his. What summer menu? He asked me to do some research into traditional cold English dishes. There's a couple of possibilities there, some nice salads and stuff. Oh, right. Well, I'll uh, see he gets them. Thanks. Probably see you at work tonight, then. See ya. <laughs> Ooh, who was that? Emma Piper. Oh, what did she want? Oh, have you not heard? It appears now she is the vital force in the decision-making of this restaurant's future. Sorry. <sighs> what is Barry playing at going behind my back like this? He hasn't even discussed new menus with me. I mean, what on earth does she know about the administration of an exclusive restaurant? Can you imagine how this makes me feel? Finding out crucial information which influences the, 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 the future of our livelihood from some jumped-up waitress. <sighs> Well, I knew this would happen. Fraternising with the staff. Oh, dear. Oh, Beth, thank God you got back in time. I mean, just imagine... You, if you can't come... even think like that. I mean, it didn't come across anything. That's all that matters. Yeah, but we shouldn't have gone away. I knew something like this would happen. And we can't go on talking like that. I mean, Beth stopped him. That's the most important thing. And what if I hadn't? What if he carried on digging and found him? Shh, it's not even worth thinking about. He said he's going to call someone out to look at it. 
They could turn up today. And even if they don't, it's only a matter of time before they do find him. Yeah, well, I'll go and see him, see if I can sort something out. I knew we shouldn't have left you on your own. Well, I'm a big girl now. And besides, I haven't been on my own. Mike have been keeping you company. No, I haven't seen much of Mike. We split up. Oh, don't kid yourself. We never were seeing each other properly. Not the way you wanted us to. I thought we were getting on really well. Well, we were. Until I realised you fronted me. Oh. So who have you been with, then? A girl called Viv. I met her at the med ball. And is she your new friend? Well, it's not serious. Does it bother you? No. No, of course not. Mum, you never were any good at lying. So how are things between you and Sinbad? Have you sorted things out? Oh, no, not really. I mean, don't get me wrong. We had a great time and we're getting on really well and everything, but I know I've messed things up. I'm not sure if Sinbad will ever be able to forgive me for what I've done. Oh, you will. Look at it on the bright side. You've still got him as a friend, haven't you? I mean, how many other men would stand by you after all this? You must know he still loves you. Yeah, I suppose so. I don't know what I've done to deserve him. You deserve each other. You're made for one another. You know, sometimes I can't help feeling I'm never destined to be happy. Just as everything starts sorting itself out and all this had to happen. Hey, everything will be all right, I promise. Ron, when are you going to do the bedroom? Give us a break, love. Well, I'd just like to have at least one room done by the end of the week. Oh, oh your father's driving me mad with all this dog muck business. I've escaped round here for a bit of peace and quiet. Hiya, Pat. Jean. Hi. You settling in all right? Oh, we'll get there eventually. Hey, seems weird talking to you over the hedge. Never had a garden before. Do you fancy coming through for a cuppa? Oh, oh come on. I'm dying to show off my new bed. You'll be amazed when you see it. Right, I'm off now. I'll see you later. All right, Maxie, how's things at the cafe? It's restaurant. It's uh, going very well, thank you. Hey, now we're neighbours. We should all have a night out there together. Make a nice change. Going out is a foursome. Yes, that'd be nice. I was just trying to persuade your Pat and Jean to come in for a cup of tea. Do you fancy it? Give you a guided tour. Only a five red. Mm. Another time, perhaps. I'm just off to work. I'll see you later. Mm. See you. Bye. So, you coming through or not? Oh, well... Um... Oh, no. Oh, go on. Quick cuppa's not going to hurt anyone. You've already turned me down once. You'll be making me parrot if you knock me back again. Uh, do you fancy it? Oh, whatever. Yes. Right, that's settled then. I'll ask the kettle on. I'm sorry about all that trouble with Beth yesterday. Oh, she really had to go with me. Well, I don't think it was anything personal, lad, you know. I think you just frightened the life out of her. You know, she'd come out seeing you in the back garden at that hour of night. Well, like I say, I did knock first, but she wasn't in. As you can see, I've wasted enough time turning this place over. The water's definitely coming from yours, mate. Well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming anyone. It's nobody's fault. Well, I'll try and get it sorted. I mean, it's my responsibility. I do own the place. Ah, not to worry. I've got a firm of drainage experts coming out tomorrow. Well, you shouldn't have bothered. No, it's all right. I'll try and get it sorted myself. <laughs> Believe me, mate, you've got no chance. I've already tried, but I was kidding myself. Big job. I'd prepare myself, though. They're probably going to make a right mess. Well, can't you cancel them? What, and pay out some massive call-out charge for nothing? Look, I don't understand what the problem is, Sinbad. It needs fixing. Well, it's a bit of an awkward moment, you see. The thing is, I'll let a mate of mine bury some gear under the patio. It's just a bit of an insurance job, you know. Oh, right. Well, I'm sorry, mate, but that's not our problem. I don't know about anything shady. My number one priority is getting this lot sorted before all kinds of other problems start setting in. Is the main bedroom. What do you think of our new bed then? It's um, it's beautiful. It really is. It's dead comfy. Sit down. Go on, Pat. Park your bum. You too, Jean. Oh, very luxurious. Very. Cost a bomb that, you know. They are. Told you, you were spoilt rotten. Oh, it's no more than I deserve. You can tell he's a fellow, though, can't you? First thing he thinks of is buying a bed. You all know what you're after. <laughs> 
No, I was thinking of having this room done in a, a more old-fashioned way, you know, to go with the bed. I was thinking of a wood effect wallpaper to give it that stately home, oldie-worldie kind of feel, but with borders. Mm hmm Hey, don't you two be getting too comfy there, you know. I haven't told you plans for the rest of the house, yeah? Come on, I'll show you our Josh's room. I hope you didn't have anything special planned for this evening, because she will have you stuck here all night now you've got her started. What happened? I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't stop him. He's got some workies coming around tomorrow, and they're going to dig up the whole garden until he find a problem. Um, Dad, we're really going to have to be making a move soon, because Alice is going to be needing her feed, aren't you? Just put the kettle on. You don't mind staying for another cup of tea, Jean? Uh, no, no, no. Right then, park your bum. I haven't even finished telling you about my plans for the outside of the house yet. Yeah? I expect Josh loves playing out there, doesn't he? Oh, Jean, he doesn't know what to do with himself with all that space. So oh, how did he get on at the doctor's this morning? Don't ask, Pat. You know, I hate going to our doctors. You're stuck in some mangy waiting room for about three hours. It's jam-packed, you get kids climbing all over you, you catch every disease under the sun, then the doctor just glances at you and writes out a prescription. What's wrong with him? Oh, he's got a rash. He's had it for a few days. What did he give you? Just some cream or other. It's all very well dishing out creams, but it's just as well to know what causes the problem. Yeah, and a lot of these things are preventable. Is that right, Pat? Didn't know that. You know, quite often it's the additives and things that they put in food. I'm very careful what I give Thomas and Alice to eat. So how do you know if something's got additives in? Well, I mean, it usually says so in the packet, you know. All those E's and things. Well, you learn something new every day. You know, until now, I just thought E's were what people took to get off the sweets. <laughs> What are we going to do? I don't know. Look, maybe we're blowing this whole thing out of proportion. How can we be blowing it out of proportion? They're coming to dig the patio up tomorrow. What could be worse than that? Well, we've got no other option then, have we? We find a way of getting rid of Rachel for the night. And then we move him. Oh, get that kettle on and park. I was just about to call out the search parties. Oh, our Mo couldn't decide what to buy. So when are we going to meet this new fella of yours then, Mo? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to see how tonight goes first. It'll be fine. You'll have a smashing time. He's a lovely fella. I feel sick. I can't remember the last time I felt like this. Look, you go and try your gear on, see what Addy thinks, and then I'll tongue your hair for you. Right, then. Mm -hmm. The nerves are gone, aren't they? Oh, no. She's really into him. Do you reckon he feels the same way about her? Well, soon find out. Mmm, time for tea now. What are you doing, eh? Hi, love. How's it going? Ah, nearly finished now. Oh, that puff on can't half talk when she gets going. Couldn't get a word in edgeways. I thought they'd never leave. Suppose she'll be in and out all the time now that we're neighbours, eh? Um, listen, I've been thinking. If you start clearing the bedroom tonight, well, maybe we can buy some new paper tomorrow. Yeah. Anything to keep you happy, my love? Oh, and don't forget, I'm going out with Rosie tonight, so I'm going to have to start getting ready soon. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, it won't be long. I've decided to give our Josh something healthy for his tea. Pasta, stuff like that. I'm going to put him on an additive-free diet. Oh, yeah? Don't suppose there's any prizes for guessing who put that daft idea in your head, is there? Hey, Pat Farnham swears by it. She won't even let their tell me have chocolate. Yeah, well, I think that's cruelty in my book. You can't deprive a kid of chocolate. If Pat Farnham told you to put your hand in the fire, would you? I have got a mind of my own, and I've made it up. Our Josh is having a healthy diet, whether you like it or not. We could have caused all this flooding next door, you know, when... No, if we had to disturb something, it wouldn't have taken this long for the water to come through. Well, you're late, Rachel. Where have you been? I was talking to Gary. He asked me to go to the pictures with him. What, tonight? Yeah, but I don't suppose I can go, though, can I? Oh, why not? Because it's school tomorrow. Well, I'm sure it won't matter just this once. You mean I can go? You don't usually let me stay out late in a school night. 
Rach, I'd go if I were you before you talk a woman to change her mind. All right, I'll go and get changed then. Thanks. Well, this is it then. We've got until she gets back to get him up and moved. Well, what if the neighbours hear us digging? Well, that shouldn't be a problem. I told Eddie Banks that I'll let her make Betty some gear under the patio. He knows an insurance job. Oh, great. Now the neighbours think we're criminals. Well, we are criminals, aren't we? Anyway, that's the least of our problems. Besides, I had to tell him something. Well, what are we going to do with him? We haven't even got a car. <sighs> I don't know. There's not a lot we can do, is there? Unless we leave him in the extension until Rachel goes to bed and then dump him in the backwoods. I don't know anything. Well, that's a bit risky. We don't even know what state he's going to be in. Yeah, well, it's no more risky than leaving him here. We've got nothing to lose. This is gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, there's your moment there, fella. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mo. Kev. Mm. How come you two were there? We just thought it'd make a nice change. Didn't expect a bump into you. Hey, I bet you just went sick when we walked in, eh? <laughs> Hiya. Hey. Table for two, is it? Yeah, I suppose so. I'd leave these two lovebirds at it. Mm -hmm. We may as well all sit together. Oh, we wouldn't want to intrude. Oh, no, we'll leave each other romantic. Yeah. Don't talk soft. We don't know what you're do we, Mum? No. Well, we're quite busy at the moment, but we've a table for two available up here. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you, but, well, we want to sit with our mates, and seeing as there's only two of you, we wondered whether you wouldn't mind swapping. Oh, we'd prefer it if you didn't disturb the customers while they're eating. I mean, it wouldn't be too much bother. You only need to pick your plates up, really. Certainly. Oh, nice one. We really appreciate that. Cheers, thanks. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. You all right there? Max, I didn't see you there. Nice and busy tonight, isn't it? I bet you're relieved. Patricia was telling me the other day how you've been worried sick, you know, what with it being empty for weeks. What are they doing in here? What do you mean? I thought we made it absolutely clear the type of clientele we wanted to attract. Er, uh, excuse me, look, can we have a bottle of wine, please? Red or white? Oh, either. We're not fussy. <laughs> you see what I mean? We do not want this place to resemble the atmosphere of a lorry driver's cuff. I thought you'd be glad of the customer. Well, you thought wrong. You should have told them we were fully booked tonight. Look, I'm not going to start telling people they can't come in because they haven't got the right accent. Look, I've had enough of this. You've had a bad attitude problem ever since you started. I've got an attitude. I am not arguing with you. This was coming all along. I'm going to give you your week's notice. You're sacking me. Yes. Yes, I am. Well, you can take your week's notice and you can shove it. I'm going anyway. I'll get myself a job where I don't have to put up with being spoken to like this. Table for five are waiting to be saved. Everything all right, Max? Yes, fine. Everything's fine. <sighs> okay. I hope your back holds out. Help me cut sold out. This one. I thought I heard something. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to scare you. It's all right. Right then. Well, uh, better leave you to it, eh? God, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Do you want to leave it for a bit? No, we haven't got time, but let's just get it over with. This we can't. Oh, it's all right, Mom. How can it be all right? And look, we may as well just give ourselves up, because we're never going to be free of him. <laughs> we can't go through with this. We can't go through with it. I mean, what are we going to find down there? What, what are we going to do with him? What, what's he going to look like after all this time? I, th I thought we were never going to see him again. I thought he was out of our lives for good. I, I don't want to see him. I, I can't go through oh, with this. I can't God, handle it. Right. I just can't Shh. handle it. Come on, we'll have the neighbours out again. Shh. Shh, come on. Oh, you're right. We'll leave him where he is. We'll think of something else. Shh. Well, like what? I mean, they could have come round and dig the garden up tomorrow. They're going to find him. Well, there's only one other option, isn't there? We're going to have to get as far away from here as possible. And leave him and everything else behind. We're gonna have to go on the run. It's our only chance. Come here. Shh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
The Channel 4 book, Brookside Life in the Close, is on sale now, price £14.99. Brookside, the house with a terrible secret. He hurt us. He hurt all of us. So we get rid of him forever. Beth, <laughs> I murdered him. I'm a murderer. <laughs> Where's my dad? He's gone, love. I think it's best for everyone that way. It'll be a nice big party all day when you get back. It'll be like nothing ever happened. Brookside, every night next week at 8.30, starting Monday.